Welcome to the Wide World of Esports, a show devoted to all things esports. I'm your host, Catherine Knorr. Today, our topic is Gameathon, esports giving back. My guest is Dexter Carr Jr., the CEO of Game for Good. Welcome, Dexter. Hi, it's wonderful to be back. All right, you actually have probably been my guest more times than anyone else. Three, this is your third time, and I'm really excited to catch up with you. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So what's the latest, Dexter? Yeah, so you know, we've been making a lot of changes lately. First and foremost, uh, I remember the previous times we were on your uh, show, the company was named you know, G Haven Esports, but we decided to rebrand to Game for Good. We felt it better. The name this A was Catcher, one, but two, it better defined what our mission was, but summarize it, which was to and basically demonstrate the value of gaming beyond just entertainment, you know, what it looks like to actually game for good and game with a purpose. And that's kind of where we got the idea from. So what what is the driving force behind game for good? Like why? Why do you game for a purpose? It kind of started from just my personal background. Video gaming has been more than just a space for, for the killing time or getting good at a video game. It's, gave, it's given me so much more and it's helped me create friendships. It's helped me, you know, just practice different skills. And from there, I've created so many, so much bonds over the years. And a lot of people, they realize that at, at its core, gaming isn't about not just having fun, but it's about building a community. And what we see with a lot of content creators, the biggest thing they focus on is building that community. You know, how do you connect with other people from a distance, even when you know we aren't able to meet each, uh, reach out to each other uh, due to a pandemic or distance? We're allowed to be able to find ways to contact, come in contact with each other, and you know, build those lifelong friendships. So what is Gameathon? Yeah, so it's very similar to the idea of what a charity stream is. And also the best analogy would be kind of like a walkathon, where how different walkathons are fundraising, where, you know, based on how far you walk, you know, people raise money or donate and pledge money toward that. Well, the difference is a Gameathon is more for video gaming. So it's not how far you walk, but it's how long you play. And since we're gaming anyway, we might as well put those hours in some use so no one could ever say again, hey, you're wasting your time video, playing video games. Nope, I'm gaming for a purpose. Ha <laughs> ha. That's fantastic. I mean, when you think about some famous walks, like um, March of Dimes, uh, they have a walk every, every March and uh, to raise money. And so I, I think that there's a lot of similarities. That's kind of a fantastic way to do that and so how does it work like how how can people become involved and and uh how can charities become involved and how can individuals become involved yeah of course so that's actually one also one of the new things that we're doing so recently we've done multiple fundraising events kind of testing out this ideology of how it works of how to be able to use the hours gamers gain to, and couple that with donors to raise money. And we had multiple successes. We've done five of them before. And we're actually building a full platform called Game for Good, which allows you to, when you create an account, you're able to connect your gamer profiles on all your favorite gaming platforms that you play on to it. And then we're able to use the data of how long you play to help to generate, to help push that engine and coupling that with, with different donors and sponsors on the platform to who, who value that, that engagement with you to be able to raise money for funds for different causes. Okay, so does the uh, gamer get to pick the cause? Yes, they do. We, uh, we have, so in the past, with MVPs, we kind of had, we had almost three at one time. We were kind of just testing out the idea for the full platform. We'll be able to have multiple uh, charities and fundraisers on our platform so the game could choose whatever fundraiser they want to uh, game towards. And on top of that, 
it doesn't matter what game you play because the value added is from gaming gaming of itself okay so you can so if if you're a fortnite player csgo player mm -hmm. um valorant player whichever mm -hmm. you can mm -hmm. use the platform is that right yeah yeah and the best thing is you don't have to be a streamer so you don't have to do charity streams just to engage with this platform you've taken that mindset you've taken that and we've get me turned it into something that could be used by the everyday gamer so if you don't want to you know put your face on the screen and stream you don't have to all you gotta do is just do what you normally do create an account connect it with your gamer profile whatever platform you do and just game like you normally would and then where does the money come from yeah so the money comes from our sponsors we take portion of that revenue and add it into the our how we put we say our play to earn engine so we take a, from percentage of what we have from our sponsors we're able to put that you no know, like a dollar per hour or 10 per hour in that so whatever uh, based upon who our sponsors are and so whenever you're able to pick a cause you'll see our different sponsors and donors that are there you can pick one and that's how you're able to translate your hours into funding. Okay, so the player, do they pick the sponsor or um, or is that pretty random um, and selected by you? No, so uh, the sponsors, uh, first of all, the sponsors are able to pick the causes that they want to donate towards. And then there's a, the, we compile a list of them and the game is able to pick which sponsor uh, they want to have their hours be translated to. So some sponsors may want to pledge a dollar per hour. Maybe they want to pledge, you no, know, maybe for every 10 hours, they'll donate $20. It, it gives everyone that, that freedom and flexibility of being able to give while at the same time engaging. So if I'm a brand and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and I'm thinking, oh, I want to reach this, um target market and mm -hmm. but i also want to be tied to a uh, game for good and giving mm -hmm. you know giving back because i think that that's part of my the message that i want to send to people mm -hmm. um do um can i um like contact you and and um become part of this like how does that work in terms of that sponsor wanting to do that and then how are are they actually advertise you know will will their image or their logo be shown to the gamers yes so when they come on the platform they're able to uh and they sponsor for whatever cause whatnot their logos and their brand will also be associated with the cause that they're supporting so the game is able to know, okay, these are the brands are supporting the cause that I care about. And we create different engagement opportunities to increase the likelihood of those gamers connecting with those brands. You know, I see this as a really good way for a non-endemic brand to infiltrate esports because mm -hmm. gaming, because I think a lot of times they're a little uncomfortable with um how they might come across and that they might not become not look very i don't know uh, might be a little awkward when they don't really have anything to do with gaming but this mm -hmm. might be the perfect way that they can get their message mm -hmm. to this younger audience is that right no, definitely definitely this was meant to accomplish kind of two things first and foremost is to create that middle ground where you're absolutely right, both endemic and non-endemic organizations, but those non-endemic who want were interested in how to uh, like enter that esports space, who don't know how, this is a way that can be done. Everyone understands fundraising, everyone has that compassionate piece. And this is once again, we're all coming together for a good cause. That's one. And two, and this is kind of one of the biggest things that kind of drove the idea of creating this one of the biggest uh one of the biggest challenges that I was that was brought to me it's about to every esports professional is 
how do you monetize esports? How do you, you know it's good when it comes to attracting attention, but besides sponsorships and advertising and winning championships, is not much of a good way to make money from it. And it's like, how do you make it profitable while at the same time, you know, driving impact? And my answer was not to create another vertical in the industry, but to create horizontals, which leads back to our company's mission, demonstrate the value of gaming beyond entertainment by creating tools and services and products that able to demonstrate and using gaming and esports as a vehicle, a means to end and of itself, we're able to demonstrate that we could create horizontals instead and how gaming could be applied in other industries as well. And the first thought process that I had was what's the one thing that everybody can relate to? Fundraising, charities, because everybody does, it doesn't matter where you go. Everyone has some sort of fundraising play. And by creating a tool that utilizes that, it creates a bridge for everyone to come to where everybody wins from that. But also it's a great way to engage and enter this space on a very you know, neutral, uh, neutral way. That's you know, the beauty of it. Sure. And I would think that your partnering or having relationships with marketing um, executives who um, are trying to get uh, brands into the esports and gaming space, that um, they would appreciate being able to tell their clients, well, here's another opportunity. It's not directly uh, buying, you know, ad space or sponsoring, you know, this event, but it is um, using your, you know, kind of using your brand in this other space that connects mm -hmm. you with, with a, um, uh, a charity. Um, mm -hmm. And even better because it isn't so in your face, I think. No, you're absolutely right. And we encourage organizations to you know, take advantage and leverage our platform because also what it does, it helps create content. You're absolutely right. You know, just blasting advertisements here and there. Maybe, maybe people will, you know, uh, choose to engage them. Sometimes they'll just, you know, ad block or skip their ad. But with this, with the platform and this tool, they can create their own campaign and create ways to engage, not just through our platform, also through themselves as well. Said, hey, we're using this tool come you know, game with us as we're raising money for this cause. And it's another way to demonstrate that, hey, you know, we want to engage as well, but we're speaking your language. And so that's like one of the ways to do that. You know, what I like about it most <laughs> is that in a sense, the gamer is saying, I agree to this advertising. I agree to your blasting me with your ads because I know it's for a good cause. and. And and by doing that, the brand really does get a nice foothold. Mm -hmm. And the biggest and the one of the things that I like to say the most when it comes to when the ROI comes to brand, just like how you know we're translating the hours into their into the dollars which are coming from those brands. What that is, think think take taking it more so thinking about it in more of a business mindset let's say charitable mindset, is that's an exchange, an exchange of time for the basic pain for their time in a way. And that money that they're paying for is going to a cause. So they have that guaranteed eye, the eyeballs, the guaranteed attention by people engaging with them for this cause. So therefore they could say without a doubt, all right, we're knowing we're getting this engagement level. It's not just people who are just you know, looking over us, no who are actually engaging with us was almost more like guaranteed engagement. Sure. Um, and so you mentioned that you've had five events uh, so far. Can you tell us about those events and the charities? The events that we've done, uh, rather five, they were uh, more so like kind of testing out the, our MVPs to test out the, the, uh, the model for the game of thons. No, we looked at different, uh, different charities, nearby and also so we've done uh one charity called chemotherapy which is in the baltimore area raising money for kids going through chemotherapy you no know, giving them all uh, helping them go through that you no know, but with games video gaming uh we have done 
stuff for the American Heart Association, as well as for uh, the Action Against Hunger and some other organizations like that. And also, our most recent one, our first one with the other organization, was with a local company here called Game Gym. And uh, they do this uh, summit three times a year, two, three times a year. And there is money for the American Heart Association, no, for the um, National Children's uh, Hospital. And so, which is really, really cool. And uh, upcoming, we're working with the Marinus, uh STEM Festival. And we're going to be using the opportunity to raise money for helping more relief funds for Ukraine during this uh, the time of conflict. So really excited for that. You know, I was going to say that would be a good one. I remember um, an organization that I'm involved in. We did a, a an event uh, to raise money for Hurricane Katrina victims. And I thought Ukraine war is a very good example uh, of, of the kind of charity that creates a lot of, you know, emotional, um, you know, kind of feelings where people want to get involved and, and, um, and participate. Um, I agree. Yeah. So, you know, and also it's interesting, you mentioned the, the charity of chemo, helping the kids going through chemotherapy. I think it's kind of a perfect match when you find these charities where the kids are gamers or like to game and that are are mm. are benefiting from the charity. Um, so it just seems so perfect. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? No, I mean, you're absolutely right. I mean, this demonstrates that, you know, hey, gaming could be used as a form of therapy. You know, gaming could be used as a form of, you know, escape. Gaming could be used as a way that you, you may not even realize you like to game until you have a reason to do it. And this, this is a great connector. Sure. Um, so last time we spoke, um, you know, we talked about what you were doing. Um, since the last time we spoke, yeah. what's, what's uh, new with your company? Yeah, so we're actually been uh, currently we're building our our standalone. So after our MVPs that we've done, we're now currently building a standalone uh, gaming platform called the fundraising platform called Game for Good. We're currently in the uh, we're closed beta testing right now. We're going to be having an open beta coming up, and we're aiming for end of June, beginning of July. So people who are interested can uh, definitely you know reach out to me and uh i'll be able to get them on that list of two people to come on and then the biggest one of the biggest things we've been currently doing is that as i said before we're working with the marina stem festival to host an, uh, a, a week-long uh esports event in which uh you no know, one of the things we're, we're the, the trying to do is create that bridge between uh stem fields and the career paths into that could lead to into the esports and gaming industry. So we're going to have some panels talking about what those career paths, what opportunities, what some diversity in the in the industry, and really trying to make an impact and bringing those opportunities to the East Coast and DMV area specifically. Fantastic. And so um, I noticed that you're wearing the G Haven um, jersey, which I think is fantastic. Um, thank you. Thank uh, you. Tell us what's going on with G Haven. Yeah, so G Haven has become our more gaming division. So we'll come to content creation, our uh, our teams, and then we're also going to be looking to start uh, up our own our own tournament league itself. So that's the kind of things we're focusing on and bringing more people together. You know, in our own gaming umbrella. So that's what what things we're really uh, planning out for the end of this year. So you know what's kind of interesting is that. In the, uh, I've noticed, and I talked about this with Sharon Gill in the last show, that since the pandemic um, began in 2020, that mm -hmm. there's been this emergence of all of these um, esports and gaming um, business. When did you start before the pandemic or during? I started before the pandemic. Um... We came up with this idea, so 
I was, so me and that Riz, my original uh, business partner, we had this idea back in 2017, and we actually started building it in 2019. And then 2020, pandemic, quarantine, we are like, wow, that's, that's crazy. Like, didn't see that coming. But we made a lot of pivots during that time, allowed us the opportunity to really open our eyes and understand what is the true direction of the company we're trying to build. Do you think the pandemic um, that your business kind of benefited from uh, the pandemic, or do you think it was a, a big uh, neck, sort of almost a negative challenge? No, it was. I mean, the pandemic at face value was negative for everybody, but I think it was positive mainly because of the fact that it really challenged our core belief of what our company was really about. And by understanding that belief allowed us to be able to easily make pivots to allow us to create new business models that still resonated with our true core, which led us to where we are now. Sure. You know, I think that there are a lot of charities who have done the same fundraising thing year after year after year, and that mm. they're that those who participate and those who give um, are getting older and older and older. <laughs> and so mm -hmm. that maybe um, they need to look at new opportunities that do target the younger, uh, younger markets. And mm -hmm. that, you know, I would think that you could actually approach some of these um, kind of Charities that have been doing the same thing for so long and and kind of give them this opportunity. Maybe it would be starting small for a while, but it would be maybe uh, diversifying their um, their ability to um, raise money. What do you think of that? No, you're absolutely right. We actually had a go to market strategy on what that looks like, um, kind of focusing on Hence, what the the five events we did prior was to kind of demonstrate what it, how the whole event looks like, and then leading by example. I, that's been my philosophy for a long time in my life. How lead by example? No, I'm not going to actually do something that I'm not willing to do myself, even in, in my business. How I lead it, but also with leading this with other organizations, other charities. Like, hey, this is how you do it you could do it too. And from that, able to share uh, what we have with them to add value to their organizations, their business models, their philosophies, their mission. So what is your dream for Game for Good? My dream for the company overall is to truly create and inspire what I like to, what I like to call socially conscious gamers. Gamers who, who, who know what it means to game with a purpose and they make differences based on that. They actually are more intentive with uh, what they do on the platform that they have. As we're seeing more and more content creators, you know, I want to be able to, you know, that's what our lifestyle is. What looks to game with a purpose. We have a powerful tool in front of us. Let's change the world with it for the better. Fantastic. Well, we are almost out of time. I would ask mm -hmm. that you let people know how they can find you and give yeah, you the last word. Yeah, definitely. Uh, if you want to get in contact with me, my LinkedIn, Dexter Carr Jr., uh, my email, djcarr at ghavenesports.com. Uh, and then my number two four zero three five one zero eight zero nine. We're looking for people who want to be beta testers, open beta testing for our new platform coming up. And then for organization and brands who are interested in sponsoring uh, the upcoming esports event we have in October uh, with the Marin STEM Festival, it'll be from October twenty fourth to the thirtieth. And it's all about you know reaching the youth and introducing and demonstrating the. Uh, career pathways for STEM and the esports and gaming industries. So looking forward to hopefully reaching out and hear from you guys. Fantastic. Well, thank you, Dexter. I really appreciate you being a guest on my show.
Of course. Thank you so much for this time. I appreciate it. All right. And to our viewers, if you would like to be a guest on the wide world of esports, please message me on LinkedIn or you can email me at Catherine at norlaw.com. And thank you for joining us today. Next week, my guest will be Tom Leonard to talk about his new esports podcast. See you then. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.